Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, everybody, Charles here, and welcome to another great show. Okay, I'm telling you right now, this is an event you don't want to miss. I'm giving you the heads up right now. I've seen the snippets. I've taken a peek. You know, I get that little sneak peek behind the scenes, and this is something you don't want to miss. This is happening. It's a gala. It's something you, it's a red carpet. We're having something going to have a blast. If I can sneak in, if I can get there, I'm going to make sure I get there. And I have the honor of the one, the only, the filmmaker, the person that put this all together. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's get this show on the way. Let's go. Good morning, good morning. All right, I'm just going to go straight to it. Let's just get started because I'm excited. I watched the snippets. I read some of the things and this is, this is fire. I have to say it right now. This is fire. But before we get into all that and get all excited, tell everybody who you are and a little bit of background on yourself. Of course. Good morning, first of all. Hey, Charles. I'm Radhika, Radhika Sitsubayisin. I am um, a former Canadian member of parliament. I'm of Tamil heritage. Um, I am a mompreneur and uh, I'm here today with the hat of being a mom and being a filmmaker and being somebody who knows that I have a loud voice and have a lot to say and uh, really want to help use my voice and uh, the power that I have, the God gifted power and skills that I have to really tell the world about the genocide of Tamil people. So that's a little bit of why we're here today. All right. So I'm going to dive right into this right off the bat. Yeah. This was not easy to make. I wasn't even there. I didn't make it. Just watching the snippets. <laughs> this was not easy to make. Like, give us. See, I don't want to give everything away. I don't want to tell everybody because you got to go down there and see yourself. But what was the first? Give me the first two struggles you had just to start <laughs> making this. Uh, you, you mean being born? And, <laughs> and a government saying you're not good enough to live. Let me kill you. That might have been, you know, one of the few early oh, ones. Okay, right off the bat, yeah. Right, right. So, but really, this this film, the movie's called Ray of Hope. It's a documentary film. I have been working on it for over 10 years now. Um, the idea came from when I was in Parliament, when I was a member of Parliament, I figured since, since I had left the country that is currently known as Sri Lanka, that's where I was born. I don't identify as a Sri Lankan. I identify as an ethnic Tamil. So I, I'm from Tamililam, which is a country that's south of India and north of Sri Lanka. Um, since I had left as a five-year-old, I had never been back because of the ongoing genocide of Tamils on that island nation. Um, and it was never safe. The civil, the, the, the armed phase of the genocide was happening where the Tamils were fighting back and um, there was war happening. So I'm a child of war and it wasn't safe for me to go back. When I was a sitting member of parliament 27 years later, I figured was maybe a safe time for me to travel. I figured they wouldn't kill me because I, I'm a, I, I've always been a very loudmouth, uh, a strong advocate about um, the Tamil genocide, the genocide of Tamil people. And I had some security that if they killed me, that would be helpful for my cause. So they wouldn't kill me, right? It's a, it's a government there. They should mm -hmm. be smart about these things. Um, and this is a government that's intentionally committing a genocide against people, against our people, my people. So they're smart. They wouldn't kill me. So I was like, okay, let's go. And um because I wanted to see things with experience it myself because everything I knew about the war, other than being shot at as a child, um, experiencing and hearing war, um, everything else was what other people had shared or pictures or videos or radio casts and stuff that uh, we were receiving here in Canada. So I wanted to go experience myself, see my mom's house, see whatever I could. And so I called my friend, a filmmaker, and said, hey, buddy, I'm going to be traveling. What camera should I take with me? Because I want to mm -hmm. capture I want to capture some stuff, some footage, so that I could bring it back and share it with Canadians and share it with the world. And um, he's like, well, you can buy a digital camera or you can just take me with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it for a hot second. And then I was like, all right. All right, let's go. 
let's let's go. Let's let's take you with me. Let's um here's your here's your flight ticket. Let's let's just, you know, tell your family. Let's go. So that was our I guess the first uh seed for this documentary to be made and that was in 2013. Yeah, but I know uh, parts of it. I noticed your family was kind of nervous. Are you going? Oh, hundred percent. Okay, I, My family I think, did not you know, want me to go. We had right. received we had received death threats from the government, um, credible from credible sources, and that if I were to ever go back there, that there was a good chance of me not coming back. This mm-hmm. was for many years. We received credible threats, and so. My family was scared. I didn't even tell my parents, actually, that I was going. I, I had to request and apply for a visa and all that kind of jazz. Like three months in advance, I did that. I told my parents three days before I left the country. Because if I had told them any time before, if I'd given them any runway, they would have done everything they could to stop the trip. So I told them literally, my bags are packed. I'm leaving three days and I'll be there for 10 days was the plan. Um, and they tried to stop me and then they realized it's me. There's no, I, I'm I'm like a full on freight train when I'm ready and it was happening and there was no stopping it. So they were like, okay, we'll just hope to God and pray that you'll make it back safe. And that's all well, they could do. Even, even in the movie, people are, are kind of hesitant. They're like, you know, I wasn't going to say anything, but I got to get this out. I'm afraid to say anything no, I'm anymore. Yeah. I'm going to say it now. It's like, it's that hidden fear. You know, you see some anger, fear. They want to get it out, but they're like, okay, if I say this, like the drawback, this is a very interesting documentary, but very emotional one, I would have to say. Absolutely. That, that, that fear. And this, it, you saw it in the trailer. Um, you know, Collins is saying, and I was, he had agreed to do an interview with us. And even that morning, he was still scared until the camera was on his face. He was still scared right. to actually talk about his own lived experience and his own, his family's lived experiences and how that might impact them and their extended family. Same went for me. Just by visiting my family, I did not do anything political, rally, nothing. Mm -hmm. All I did was go visit my family, friends, extended families, see the country. And the minute I left the country, every single one of my extended family was interrogated. Of why you're here, what you doing, how come she came, like all that. What stuff. are you involved in? Who's who? What's happening? Who? What? Where? When? Why? How? And these are trained interrogators who are literally pulling one person at a time mm-hmm. and interrogating. Every single member of my extended family was interrogated. Um, anybody I came in contact. And the just- hotel work. The hotel workers. The people. I had an extended family member who I was visiting. They were interrogated. Everybody doesn't matter mm-hmm. who it was. If if. If I came in contact with them, they were interrogated by the government. Government. This, was, this, is, this is what 1977. Okay. Like what was 1977. No, I mean like years ago. Like I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. This is going back years now, right? I'm Way like, before I, that. Right. I'm, I'm aging myself, right? So I, I'm saying before that, right? Yeah. And it still lives on. Yes, the genocide continues. So. In the movie, we 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 provide a good context for people who might not know the history. I mean, many of us here in Canada, especially in the GTA, have a friend who's Tamil, have a coworker who's Tamil, went to school with Tamil people, live next door to Tamil people, but don't necessarily know why we are here, why there's so many Tamil people here. Um, so this movie, this documentary film, our, our goal is to really set the stage a little, give context on the historical reason as to why we're all here, why we're all over the world, um, what happened. So, I mean, the island of Sri Lanka, or the island that was known as Ceylon when the British had occupied it, um, when they left, when the island was decolonized, it was improperly decolonized because for ages and ages, it was historical evidence shows that there were three kingdoms on that island. There was Tamil territory and Singhala territory. And 
even the Portuguese and the Dutch who colonized that island before clearly have documented evidence that there was two separate peoples and they govern them as two separate people. But when the Brits left, they decided, Meh, you know, let's just lump them all into one people and call it a day. So from that day, when the island got independence from the colonizer, mm -hmm. the genocide, the intentional genocide of the Tamils started because when the British left, they left the rule of the government in the hands of the majority. They just said, well, there's more Sinhalese people. Let's put all of you in government. Let's put you in government to govern the entire three different kingdoms that were here. And mm -hmm. um, they, they changed the name of the country. Sri Lanka, from what I've been told, in Sinhalese means my country or my land or our land. Mm, okay. In their language, it means... I my land or our land mm -hmm. in the renaming of the country alone it's discriminatory and s segregates people the way that they set up the flag of the nation okay it's discriminatory it, it attacks it, they have a lion which represents a single these people holding a, a sword I, I don't know what the type of sword but the blade is facing towards the two stripes which are the Tamils and the Muslim minorities Oh, so it's okay. like the lion that's protecting and ready to attack you people. Right, right, right. And it's within the um, the the leaves on the in the four corners are specifically from Buddhist religion and the way that the, the Constitution was created. Even it says that it's a Buddhist nation, again, discriminating anybody who is not. So all of the Tamils or all of the other people are basically Tamils. You've got the Hindus, the Christians, the Muslims, everybody is a Tamil. Most for the most part, right? Um, so it's designed, the nation was designed to be against Tamil people, and they continue to operate in that way. There were 1948 was when that happened. In the early 50s, they had the Singala Only Act, where basically it was about everything was going to be in Singalese. And I go into a lot more detail and provide evidence in the documentary as well. Yeah, I'm not. Awesome. I'm not going to tell you the whole documentary right now, but um, <laughs> well, yeah. listen. The genocide started right then, and it it traversed. You know, nonviolent struggle, armed struggle, and 2009 May was the mass massacre of Tamils in on that on that island, and that was the second last phase of a genocide. If you go, and right now they're in denial, right? They're in, in the last phase of genocide while they continue to say, no, nope, nothing's happening. Nothing's going on here. Don't be looking over here. We're just celebrating our heroes. But the world is starting to, starting to hear that there's something fishy going on over there. You know, something's rotten. I'm not going to start quoting Hamlet right now. <laughs> Well, let's put it this Nothing's way. Nothing's rotten in the state of Denmark. You want to know what's going on, what the little snippets is about, you got Sunday, May 5th. Make sure you go over there. Where is it at? Right, right there. Okay. <laughs> make sure you make sure you get there. And when I say on time, you got to get there on time. Make sure you get the seat early, get a front row seat, get there early. Where is it happening? Actually, it's actually, it's at the Scarborough Convention Center. It's a, it's a gala, right and uh, we're also going to be screening the film at the Scarborough Convention Center. Um, the film is 95 minutes long, so it's an hour and a half. Um, but we start off with the red carpet and um, the whole red carpet feel. Hollywood, ho we're bringing Hollywood to Toronto, really, with the red carpet feel in the Convention Center's lobby area. And then um, we'll go inside where there will be dinner. There will be dinner served. And during the time, we'll do an appreciation for the cast and crew who've literally put in their blood, sweat and tears. And as you know, fears of their fam for their family and for themselves, put it, risk it all on the line. Um, and then we'll show the film, um, have dessert and have a conversation with the select members of the, ca of the cast and crew after the film screens as well. So it'll be a very right. special event. So the question is. Yes. What do you want people to get out of this movie? <clears throat> out of the movie. Out of out of the documentary. But don't answer that. We're gonna take a quick break. And okay. after that, 
you can answer that question. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. Immigrant Women in Business, IWB, is a non-profit organization bringing together women from over 50 different countries around the globe. These women have now made Canada their home and share a common goal of providing value to their new sisters. Our motto of We Are Stronger Together resonates with all members and with a diverse membership of business leaders, entrepreneurs and community builders our goal is to make Canada better and provide guidance and leadership to those that follow. All right, we are live. And before I left, I asked you, what do you want everybody to get out of it? What's the main thing? Like, you know, people do it all the time. They do with it. But what's the one message you want people to take away, see this and say, ah, I get it. Right. There has been and continues a genocide of the Tamil people. Um, that's 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 their main message out of this documentary for me is that there has been and continues to be a genocide of Tamil people. The Tamil Tamils as individuals and as a people, we are so resilient and continue to rise like a phoenix from the ashes. They can burn us. They could do everything they can. We will continue to rise and continue to fight on a global stage to have that genocide recognized. And we do show in the film our continued efforts, even now engaging with the United Nations mechanism. There are so many mothers who are missing, who, who's had their sons missing or murdered. And every day they're protesting and doing what they can on the ground. And it's our collective responsibility as a world to not just sit idly by. Um, it may not be idle, uh, that it may not be fair to say to the global community that you're all sitting idly by, because this is a silent genocide. The, the government intentionally kept it silent and didn't want the world to know about it. So now it's up to us to come together and amplify one another's voices and make sure that that genocide is recognized and we continue to move forward so that the people who continue to live can live, hopefully this generation can start to know that they are recognized, that they are seen. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. In the snippet I watched, there were some yeah. two young teens and they were yeah. talking about it. Is there a stigma still? Like, do they feel like there's a, there's a pain to them? Like they don't, like the way they said it, they didn't really, when I say, oh yeah, we're Jamaicans, we're this, like, you know, you, you say it out and whatever. And they just said, yeah, they're, the emotion that what I was watching yeah. Coming out. Can you explain that to me? Of course. We don't have a place that's recognized right now where we can say is back home. Like for me, I'm a Canadian citizen and that's it. I don't have a citizenship anywhere else. Um, when people ask, well, but where are you from? And I okay. say, well, I'm an ethnic Tamil from the country known as Tamilulam. It's south of India, north of Sri Lanka, because people have don't know. It's not recognized on a map. Uh, it's still a non-self-governing state. And you you hear the young man say, I'm Tamalulam and that's it. Yes. yes. Like, this is my statement. And <laughs> yeah. this is what many of us who are brave enough or courageous enough to push through that fear are willing to say. Many others identify and say, you know, I'm 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 a Sri Lankan Tamil, they'd say, or I'm Tamil from Sri Lanka. Because we need to identify us ourselves as Tamils. And so people, because we don't have a recognized state, we had a state. We had Tamilulam. Even a former president of Sri Lanka said, you know, I'm negotiating with another country. I'm at war with another country. So we had our own kingdoms which were improperly decolonized. And so we had a state that was ours, <clears throat> but it's not recognized by the colonial system today. And so it's up to us as the diaspora Tamils, but also Charles, you and everybody else, you know, Svetlana, everybody coming together um, to build those allyships and bridges between and among our communities to amplify my voice amplify her voice those young those young people's voices and say this is who i am and i would love to be able to say i am from tamalula yeah cuz this to be honest with you i didn't know what was going on until i w watched the snippet didn't yeah. know you know you learn stuff you know and, unless you someone else from another country or culture tells you oh this what happened back in you're you're blind to it 
Absolutely. So, so I think it's not just for one culture, it's for every culture to come out, learn a little something about what's happening around the world. Absolutely. Here's where you can go. I've actually put the link, Eventbrite, in the description so you can click awesome. on it, get yeah. your tickets. You want more details, go to rayofhopedoc.com. So that's the website. The Eventbrite link is in there as well. The trailer is on the website. Getting in touch with us is on the website. Um, if you have connections, you have ways that you want to sponsor um, at the gala event on May 5th, um, there's an entire sponsorship package we put together. Um, join us, add your voice, bring your wallets with you too, is what I guess I'd also say. <laughs> Open your open your heart and open your wallets. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna put this on the screen because I think that's some of your sponsors there on the bottom. Yes, CTCEO so and CTCJA is the Canadian Tamil Cinema Enhancement Organization, and uh, Canadian Tamil Coalition for Justice and Accountability have come on as two of our community partners, and they're actually the ones who are hosting this gala event um, as a way to say thank you, as a way to show appreciation to the cast and crew who have literally put in blood, sweat, and tears for some of us over 10 years into this project. Um, it's super exciting. It's important, um, not only for me, not only for us as Tamils, but for us as global citizens to recognize that we are our brothers and we are our sisters keepers. And living in Toronto, living in Canada, we are all responsible for one another. And it's important, I think, to know each other's histories and um, context as to why we are the way we are. Um, I mean, Charles, you, you, you must know Tamil people, but you probably didn't know a lot <laughs> of this context. So that's what this documentary is about. It's, it's not the first time you're going to have a conversation. I promise it's not the last time you're going to have mm -hmm. someone tell you, but it's an opportunity that I saw that where there was a void, there was a vacuum, there wasn't a space where within the artistic community, within film, where there is a story or a documentary, um, a documented film that provides that historical context, as well as showing the resilience and beauty of the culture and the people. Um, and that we are Tamils, but we are so diverse as well. Well, look, the trailer alone gave me so much information that I didn't even know. So I can imagine the whole documentary because I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's wild. Oh, OK. That's what I'm saying. That little snippet showed me the feeling, the emotion, what was going on. But I'm a person on visuals. Yeah. This right here, the cover. This is our gotta, poster. This is one of the two posters for the you, film. You, you got to explain this because if you can't see it. All right. I'm going to tell you guys <laughs> to go there and look at it. This is a silhouette. Is that silhouette of you? It is. OK. Then there's a little girl in there holding her teddy bear, just looking out out the city. S standing in the middle of the road, looking out at this large metropolis. Yeah. And to me, she's got the teddy bear just hanging down. Like usually you hug your teddy bear. Hers is just hanging down. Like she's looking out going, what's going on? Yeah. Okay. That's to me. But the part that's, that's really good. If you look on your shoulders, why do I see tanks? army guys coming towards am i like explain yeah. how did this concept come about look at you you finding all of the all of the little symbolism that we've intentionally put in there i mean it's so that little little girl is either me as the five-year-old arriving and looking at this giant world of canada and going whoa <laughs> yeah. but, it, but there's also that intergenerational transference of trauma and experience so it could also be my five-year-old daughter so mm -hmm. when we did our principal footage Maya my daughter was five years old so she on the poster she's the second listed participant because she's in the film as well and a, as a pivotal character um person sharing her realities um so it's both of those in one um obviously that ray of hope is that sunshine that we're walking towards or looking towards as well that this is this is all big and overwhelming this great big world but this is where we also have hope in in this new land and that doesn't have to be canada right it could be tamils who went to germany finland france 
wherever. Um, and of course, these tanks and military crawling up my shoulder coming towards me is the reality of Tamils. We having army with tanks and everything coming towards us um, is our reality. And as they come towards us, we escape and go to other places. And that's where the airplane comes in as well. Um, and if you look in the background, in the green, you can actually see, or the, the color background to, behind my head. It's a you map. See, you see them. There you go. Look yep. at you. You don't even need me to point things out. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at it. I'm like, okay, because I'm, you know, all this like, the story tells you posters mean everything as an event planner. I look for details and I'm like, okay, if you can't yeah. look at this and go, there's something in this that you have to go watch. That's you the know, map of Kamalulam. Yeah. That, that's what you got to look at. All right. Last time it's right there. If you look at the other poster, um, it's, it's actually shows a more artistic ex ex experience, I guess, because I'm a professional classical Indian dancer as well. I'm a, I'm a classical Bharatanatyam dancer. And okay. For me, my art was a very important way for me to connect with my identity, my Tamil heritage while growing up in Canada. And so it was important for us to intertwine the art into the movie as well. So instead of showing scenes of war and blood and gore and all that, we, we share that throughout the film through dance, um, through the art and so it's I just love how beautifully the editors have put it all together um it really weaves a story sharing and showing what our people have gone through and we also should talk about what they continue to go through all right so here it is I'm gonna have some fun with you let's go let's go let's go <laughs> All right, we're going to do rapid fire because I like to know people, what they think, how they are, how this came about, everything like that. So we're going to have a fun game called rapid fire before we let you go. Okay. You're going to choose your own questions, A, B, C, or D. Here's the only thing, though. There's two minutes on the clock, so you got to get through all the questions. You can elaborate on your questions, but remember, there's two minutes on the clock, and you got to get through all of them in rapid fire. Okay. A, B, C, or D? C. C. All right, here we go. And I'm going to change them up a little bit to go with what you did. All right, so here we go. Starting now. What's the best compliment you ever gotten so far on this project? A young man telling me that this has been something he's been searching for. And he's just so excited that somebody's talking about this and that now he has something to connect with and work on it. What's the best part of your mornings now waking up? My daughter. What advice would you give someone else to make a documentary like yourself? Do it, do it, do it. Um, tell your stories, whether it's through uh, shorts, whether it's through making small reels and then putting it all together, uh, whether there's money or not, do it. Tell your stories because you have to speak your own voice. And um, we as a community, broader community will come out, have to be there because it can't be you making it on your own. What's your fear? That I wouldn't have made enough of a difference so that my daughter and the next generation can live in a world where they can actually exhale and know that they're safe. Favorite childhood memory? Um, well, the first thing that came to my mind is playing, learning with my grandfather. Okay, and then, well, that skips the next one because it says found this memory as a kid. So I'm going to step over that one. <laughs> You've been two into one. All right, here's the last one. It's going out where it is. If someone wants to do it, the budget. This must have been, a, you know, something taxing on you. So anybody want to shout out real quick because the budget couldn't be easy to do this. So show no, people real quick. Not at all. Not easy. Um, yeah, seed funding was me, but we've had Ryan Singh, the producer um, and co-director of the film, who's put a lot of so much of his own time, energy, money, life into it and his family, his his wife, oh my God, Cheryl, um, Morley and iCatch Media and the work that they put into helping us. Um, there's so many. We're talking to distributors, everybody coming on board. And that's your two minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but we got through more than four questions. <laughs> 
I got one more for you, though. I got to do one more. For four. That was like 10. Hey, I got one more for you because I got to know you said something. So I'm like, all right, let me see what she's like. Here it is. Okay. Dance with Lady Gaga mm -hmm. or dinner with the Obamas? Dinner with the Obamas, 100%. <laughs> but you said you're a dancer, so I thought, okay, maybe. Yeah. Because with the Obamas, we're going to have dinner and then dance anyway. Ah, uh, okay. There we're going to dance after anyway. <laughs> okay. See, that's why you did this. That's why you did this film. There you go. Listen, it's been an honor and a pleasure to get this information out there, to get to know you a little bit more. Please go support. It's real simple. It's happening right there. At the Scarborough Convention Center. May that's 5th, 20 Torum Place is the address for Scarborough Convention Center. Join us through... You can find us on Facebook. It's Ray of Hope Documentary. Instagram is Ray of Hope Doc. Um, my YouTube channel will start pushing stuff through my YouTube channel as well. It's Radhika TV. You can find me on Instagram. It's my entire name, Radhika Sitsavaisin. <laughs> Because I couldn't find anything simpler. Um, one thing, though, on Facebook, there is my my old Facebook page that has over 40,000 followers. That's been hacked. So if you can report it and help shut it down or take back control, that's great. But if you want to join me, find me on the one that has about 4,000 followers because I had to create a brand new page. So um, that's where we're rebuilding over on Facebook. The, the picture, the, there's only one true page of me on Facebook, the one that has my daughter and me together in the profile. Everything else is not me. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to make it easy for everybody. To say your name one more time and last name? Radhika Sitsavaisen. Okay. And that's how you spell it. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make it real easy for everybody. Copy it right there. Put it into all social media. It will pop up. Make sure you find the right one. There the it one is. has my daughter and me together. That's there the you one. go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Listen, this has been a fantastic interview. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank I wish you, you all the best on it. It's going to be fantastic. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be great. Just go out and support. Get the tickets. Get them early. You don't want to miss out. And support. Like she said, hey, we're telling you right now, you know, you want to throw a little donation here and there. You know, we'll do, it. <laughs> do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. All right, everybody. There's only space for 1,500 people at the at the convention center, and tickets are selling. We're maybe about at least already a third of the way sold out already. There so, you go. So you don't want to be the last person to miss out. All right. Like I always say, you didn't have to watch, you didn't have to listen, but I'm so glad you did. But guess what? Today, you and I, we both learned something today, and we get better for it each time we learn information. So thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Thank you has come to an end. But the fun doesn't have to stop here. If you have any questions, suggestions or feedback, head over right now to Twitter and Facebook and like, share and get involved. Join us next time. Please be advised that this podcast is meant for educational and informational purposes only and is in no way a replacement for legal or medical advice. The opinion